Right then, Kirsty, I'm off. All right. See you later. Have a good time. Bye, Branson. Oh, you might want the box. Oh. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's hard to miss, really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it is a little bit. It's worrying. <laughs> See you later. Scott's first job is 90 miles away. He's had an SOS from his good mate Charlotte on the Isle of Wight. My friend Charlotte runs the Isle of Wight Zoo, where she looks after a vast array of exotic creatures, and one of her precious tigers needs help. Scott will be joining a team of experts who've all been asked to travel to the island for specialist surgery on one of the resident tigers. Who are you having a snooze? <laughs> Aisha, <coughs> are you sleeping? Yes. <laughs> Aishi. Scott will be meeting up with zoo director Charlotte who spent most of her life caring for rescue animals like 19-year-old Aisha. I came to the Isle of Wight when I was just three months old. I was brought here by my father, who thought it was a really good idea with a young family to buy a run-down zoo. Come and see Mum. I know. We got our first tiger when I was still very young and some of them I have raised since they were very small and a few of them are still here now. So that makes me feel very old. Good girl. I know, sweetie, I know. Oh, the good girl. All tigers at the sanctuary have been rescued from circuses or zoos. And with Bengal tigers now an endangered species, Charlotte's efforts are part of a global push to preserve their dwindling numbers. Humans have persecuted tigers and they've, you know, robbed them of their habitat. And let's face it, we would all rather that they weren't here, that they weren't living a kind of life support system and that they were living totally independently in the wild. That's where they should be. So it's never hung or sat very well with me, the fact that, you know, they, they are living here and we are looking after them, but we do see ourselves as custodians of them. Scott's already had experience working on Charlotte's big cats. After surgery last year on 21-year-old Zia. We used just the same dyes that we would at the Richmond practice with my feline patients. Put a little bit of dye in there, it stains onto her cornea and I can see that there's a corneal ulcer. Scott's back with us. He was really helpful when he came before. So yes, I'm sure he's going to be a, a really instrumental part of the team. I know he's looking forward to it as well. Hi. Hello, mate. Hi, good to see you. And you. How are you? have got cold ears. Well, it's freezing. Every time I come to the Isle of Wight, it is bitterly but, cold. But I think you're going to bring some Australian sunshine or something. I think I've got some in my vet box, so don't worry. Despite Charlotte's warm welcome, I can tell she's nervous. These tigers, it's no exaggeration to say, are like her family, and like any protective mum, she'll do anything to look after them. All right, so this is Aisha's enclosure here, isn't it? Yeah. Hi, baby. Hi, Aishi. <laughs> hello, baby. Oh, hello. I've missed hello. you too. Are you saying hello to Scott? Are you, are you saying hello to Scott? Yes, I know, I know, I know. The greeting gesture for a tiger is a chuffing noise. A it's sort of a reverberation through the nasal passages. It's kind of like purring for tigers. <coughs> yes, I know. It is absolutely incredible when out of the blue, this guttural chuff comes right back at you. It's literally like having a conversation with a tiger. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hello, my baby. You can't complain at that welcome, can you? Mm. Although, she's got yeah. some pretty bad breath. Yeah. Hey, no surprises that she needs some dental yeah. work. It's a good job she's a bit deaf as well. She wouldn't <laughs> take kindly to you saying that. Oh, I know, it's <laughs> offensive. <laughs> So how has it come to your attention that she has issues with the teeth? Just really by watching the way she eats, because normally they should quite comfortably be able to chew through hide and grind bone. And she's been very sensitive and reluctant to do that to the point that we've had to cut her meat up for her like, oh. a, like a baby. Oh. So she just gets like little bits of fresh. I know, exactly. <laughs> Aisha's reluctance to eat really does tell me that she's in quite a lot of pain and that rancid breath would definitely suggest that there's some sort of rotting teeth present in her mouth and they're going to have to come out. At 19 years old, she is 
you know, pretty much twice the age that a tiger would be living to in the wild. And of course, they weren't really designed in a way to live that long. And so yeah. their teeth, um, it's not unusual that their teeth would be giving them some problems at this age. There's not many grannies out there that have got all their own teeth. No, exactly. In fairness to them, yes. yeah. Charlotte has arranged a specialist veterinary dentist to perform the extractions. And while Aisha's under anaesthetic, Scott will be in charge of carrying out a full health check on the geriatric tiger. How are you feeling about yet another anaesthetic on one of your elderly tigers? Yeah, it's just an emotional roller coaster, really. But yeah, we can't say, well, we're scared about the potential consequences of knocking her out, and therefore we're not going to do it. You and know? she spends every day suffering. Yeah, so no, we have to do it. And just with humans, anaesthesia gets more dangerous, obviously, as you get older. So, of course, there's always the worst case scenario, which is never far from your mind. It's always with trepidation. I never sleep well the night before. Um, gin and tonic always helps. <laughs> I know that we'll all do our very best to make sure. Yeah, she you comes certainly through. will. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to sort you right out. Yes, we are. While Aisha spends a quiet afternoon ahead of tomorrow's surgery, Scott now has two more unusual patients to attend to. Hey, James. Oh, yeah. First things first. Yes. I hear I need to neuter some coates. Yes, absolutely, yeah. These guys are my beloved springtail coates. Animal carer James is looking after two newly arrived rescue coates. So this is Sattler. She's our female ringtail coate. She's very approachable, very friendly. And we've got Grant, the male, who's just hanging around behind us. Before Grant and Sattler came to us, um, they were actually doing children's parties. And what would happen is this gentleman would take the coates on leashes and show the children. And once that party was done, then they'd get back in the crate and go back to this guy's basement. God, it's just impossible to imagine. So glad that they're here. Yeah, it was a little bit overwhelming from at first. It was a bit, you know, gone from complete under-stimulation to over-stimulation. Yeah. So it took them a while. It's wonderful to see their sort of instinctive wild behaviours coming through. Yes, absolutely, yeah. But they're getting to sexual maturity and that would be bad. That would be bad, to... yes. It's great meeting Grant and Sadler, but I am here for a reason and that's to neuter them. First of all, it's because it's law here in the UK. These animals are invasive species and if they accidentally were released or escaped, they can actually breed. And secondly, they're brother and sister and you never want to have brother and sister mating, do you? Come on. Good boy. Good boy, Grant. Right, let's get out of this rain. Yes. This is my first Kawati spay and castration, but I am a vet with 20 years experience and I've neutered countless different types of mammals. So this is just another one to add to the list. Wow, it's an uh, absolutely beautiful day to <laughs> neuter a Kawati, isn't it? Yeah. Hey? Ah, welcome, Isle of Wight. Welcome to the sunny Isle of Wight. Oh, it's absolutely glorious. Yeah. It will be the first ever Kawati neutering on the island. And Scott has been asked to lead the veterinary team. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Wow, good. You really turned on this beautiful Isle of Wight weather. Yes, yeah, the Isle of Sunshine. So here's our little Coate patient. Assisting Scott will be local vet Matt and Nurse Francis. OK, boy. We'll put him straight back in the box, yeah, eh? Yeah, just... OK. That's it. Oh, he's already waking up. Yeah. Yeah. Sit, good boy. With Grant already starting to recover from his surgery, it's time for the spay on the female Kawati Sattler. That's that. So we can make this go up. But now I can add Kawati castration and spay to the list, so it feels like the members of the mammalian family in the UK should be where Scotty's ready for you. <laughs> well done, team. Two neutered Kawatis. Excellent. Happy with that. Dr. Orden. So now the culmination of all your hard work to train them to the point where they'll actually allow an anaesthesia without a gun. Definitely, it takes a lot of hard work. On the Isle of Wight, it's the day before surgery on elderly tiger Aisha. And Scott wants to check up on the unusual training she's been undergoing in preparation for the risky anaesthetic. Last time I was here to perform surgery on a tiger, we needed to use a dart gun to deliver the anaesthetic. But this time round, Keeper Kaz has been doing some really interesting work with Aisha to try and reduce the stress of her anaesthetic. 
If you imagine yourself, I'm running around after you with a giant gun wanting to shoot you in the bottom with a high-pressure dart. Yeah. It's I not hate when you do that, Kaz. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but then afterwards, you're not going to want to be anywhere near me, are you? Good girl. When you're doing training, it's all very, very positive. Uh, it's a very cooperative relationship. I ask the cat to do something. If they do it, they get a reward. Not only is the animal less stressed, but there's a lot less adrenaline, so we need to use less sedata to actually knock them down, which in the long run is a lot healthier for the animal as well. Aisha, come along. Come along. Down. OK, go ahead. So I'm sort of pinching like the little sting of a needle might feel yeah, definitely. when we do the anaesthetic. And how long has this taken you to actually achieve? I have been working on it for about six weeks. Wow. Aisha's a really intelligent character, bless her, so it doesn't take her long to actually um, understand what it is I want from her. Aisha doesn't know Scott very well, so that would have been quite a new experience for her. And I think she did absolutely fantastic. She was, did really, really well. Come along. Down. That's amazing. This is really, really positive. I'm, I'm really excited. You've done excited a fantastic about. job. Thank Kaz. you. So, Thank you very much. I'm chuffed for you, and she's chuffing at you. <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> <laughs> Not only is doing this trial run an amazing example of the work that keepers put in with their charges, but also it's very clear that Aisha needs this dental work because even the treats that we're using, she's really struggling to eat them. So we definitely need to perform the dental on her tomorrow. I'm so glad that you're putting in this work yeah. because I think it makes our job easier. It means that the risk for the animal is so much less, less okay. anaesthetic, and hopefully uh, Charlotte, our boss, will be happy. Fingers crossed. That's what I dream of. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, you're right. Do you need some help? Yes, they weigh a ton. <laughs> oh. oh, my God, they're huge. They are massive. Do you want to grab that? Yeah, end? of course. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> yeah, they're not light. Back at Scott's Richmond practice, Claire has arrived with five new puppies. Real landmark day because they are having their first vaccinations and a microchip. So they'll be ready then to go off to their new home into the next stage of their life. I'm just going to give her a bit of a hand. Clear. Whoa! There we, Here we go. Here we go. That's quite a big puppy, that one. The pups were born eight weeks ago at home, with Scott helping an anxious Claire through the ordeal. She just popped out another puppy. Oh, she did. Wow. <laughs> that was I can't quick believe work. that just happened. The Celium Terrier pups are booked in today with vet Phoebe. Hi Claire. Hello. How are you? I'm all right. You <laughs> okay. I've been looking forward to this all day. Yes, they are the cutest things you could imagine. You take one end, I'll cut you right. Oh, there we go. I'm very excited, but also quite daunted. It's going to be mayhem. Look at that little face. <laughs> all I want to do is cuddle Claire's adorable little puppies all day, but unfortunately, we have a job to do. There we go. Hello, little black ear. Little black ear. Right then. OK. Temperature time, the third meanest thing I'm going to do today. Ooh. Ooh, it's going to be cold. Here we go, girl. Hello, Mama. Good. It's all new and exciting. Good, good. Pass your health check. Yay! Yay! Now it's vaccine time. Oh, no! <laughs> She's barking at my feet. First one today. Yes. Look at that. Did you do it? Yeah, I've done it. You didn't even notice. She was really good. <laughs> so the first thing is we have to scan to make sure that you don't have a microchip already. Uh, yes. There we go. I can't find one. No. Unfortunately, this is the rather large needle that I have to use to inject the puppies' microchips. I hope it's not too scary for them because it's it's almost as big as them. <laughs> you get girl, you're Ready? so brave, you're so brave, you're so brave, you're so brave, good girl, it's okay, it's okay. Oh, 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 it's okay. Okay, 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 okay. They're all gonna hate me. <laughs> On to the next one. <laughs> big chunky puppy. 
It's time to bring out my secret weapon, I think, which is treats. This will hopefully keep the puppies distracted at one end while I inject them in the other. Distraction. <laughs> well, now we know what to do with the that others. That was brilliant. That's incredible. Look at that. Success. Two down, three more to go. There we go. Oh, a treat apparently makes it completely painless. There we go. That's it. You passed. Well done. Girl, so brave. Oh, There wow. we go. There we are. That's it. Last one. Yay, there we go. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> well done. And everybody still loves you. And everybody still loves <laughs> me. That's a good sign. Hello. All finished. Hello. While the pups recover from their first vet visit, Claire can start looking for their new homes. Um, yeah, bit butterfly-ish. Next morning on the Isle of Wight, it's time for 19-year-old Tiger Aisha's surgery. Kind of like to just fast forward really and get to the point where we're waking her up and everything's gone smoothly. Charlotte has assembled a team of experts from around the UK to make sure everything goes smoothly for her elderly cat. We've got John Lewis. He specializes in anesthesia, big cats and also primates, but he works all over the world. He works out in the wild in Siberia, for example, with tigers there. So yeah, he's the guy that you want in charge of, of the knockout, definitely. We've got Matthew Oxford. So he specializes in veterinary dentistry. Matthew Twitchett, who's our local vet who has overall care of the animals on a day-to-day -day basis. And of course, we've got Scott. So she's got a good A-team around her. Are we all ready? Yep. Okay, go for it. Shut it in. Yes. Aisha! With the team in okay. place, it's time for the crucial final part of Aisha's anaesthetic training. Mm. Aisha? Down? Mm. Aisha can't eat so close to surgery. So this time, Kaz will be relying on just the sight and scent of the meat to guide the big cat into position. Always tricky. If she goes down, we might best just hand inject the rest of it. It just depends where she goes and how far she goes down. It's annoying. That is the problem with hand injecting, as opposed to darting. So John, all the training that Kaz has put in to encourage Aisha to accept a hand injection kind of half worked because you got half the drug in. It's a bit like working with children, isn't it? I mean, sometimes they behave, sometimes they don't. I mean, cats, they're not machines. So they won't necessarily do everything you want them to do, even after training, every time. I'm a stranger. So if nothing else, the one thing that's odd to her is me. Now, the fact that I'm doing something else, a little nip or whatever, is an additional oddity, so I'm not surprised. Mm. I'll see how sedate that makes her when she's had partial injections, and if she's close enough for me to just, you know, give her the rest of it, that's what we'll do. She has gone very dozy, and she's got her head right against the door we need to open. So I'm just gonna open the door a little bit and then just give her the rest of it by hand injection, hopefully. But if she springs up when I'm doing that, I'm going to come out very rapidly. But I think for safety reasons, I'm afraid I'm going to ask you to step outside. I think you give her a minute. On the Isle of Wight, it's a stalemate for Scott and the surgical team, with partially anaesthetised Asia now wedged in an awkward position, blocking the door. So if you could step outside, do you know I'm not going to give her the whole lot? What John's done then is shown all of his experience because uh, he's just had to go in and further inject Aisha as she hasn't had the full dose. He's done that really at his own peril. Very brave man. Well done, John. OK, well, she's fast asleep, actually. It's really tense today. You can absolutely cut the atmosphere 
with a knife. Go on. Well, let us stop twitching, I think. Oh. Come on, move. John, is that okay to come in? Yeah, yeah. Hang on, everybody, just hang on. One, come on, two, let's get on the street. Poor Charlotte looks so nervous and so worried, but all the professionals here today are a little bit nervous, as you would be when you're anaesthetizing a 19-year-old tiger. Time is now critical. Aisha can't stay under for more than three hours. So now it's all systems go. While Matt is looking at Aisha's teeth, I've got a list of problems that Charlotte wants me to look at. Uh, so just clipping Aisha's leg, uh, we're just going to put in a IV catheter just to have IV access. OK, one, two, three, go. It's been a long procedure, but a worthy one. We've managed to assess a lot of different issues, and now, fingers crossed, she wakes up. An anxious Charlotte is sneaking a very quick look at her precious old girl. So there you have it. One Tiger Dental done. How are you feeling? I'm relieved. <laughs> well, I'm smiling. <laughs> yeah, I'm massively relieved. We've done all the work that we needed to do. So it was a massive team effort. So looking forward to um, seeing her back properly up on her feet and chuffing in her normal Asia style. So yeah, the moment she's feeling groggy, feeling like she's got a bad hangover, but all the signs are really good. You've got a full set of teeth and your mummy is not supposed to be tolerant of you chewing but apparently she's tolerant of everything and has infinite patience with you. Back in Richmond, Claire has some exciting news. No, don't chew my hands. She's had success finding homes for her Celium Terrier pups. <laughs> That's better. You're a good boy. The first puppy born we are calling Panic Button. He really is my cuddly baby, and he is the one that's going to break my heart when he goes. So maybe you might be going up north. Maybe. What are you doing, Betsy? Second puppy is now going to be called Betsy. She's the biggest puppy, actually. She's Miss Greedy. She's the one I have to watch. She will eat everybody else's food. She puts on weight at a ridiculous rate. So she's going to have a lovely time on a farm. <laughs> puppy number three is going to be called Arthur. He was the puppy that cried every time Betty left the whelping box. So I'm quite happy he's staying locally. His new family are coming in regularly so that he can get to know them, so that when he leaves, it hopefully won't be so traumatic that um, he won't be going to strangers. It'll be people that he knows. Staying really close to home so we can keep my eye on you. Puppy number four is one of the smaller puppies again. She's a girl. We're calling her Little Black Ear. She's very cute. She's very pretty. She's the real feisty one. And she's a lot of trouble. Yeah, you're staying with me. Last and definitely not least is number five, who is going to be called Alice and is staying right here with us. Come on. Come on, don't give up. Alice is the pup which gave Scott and Claire such a scare as she was being born. Go on, 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 go on. Oh! Okay. So give me that towel really yep. quickly. Yep. This puppy is really compromised and I'm just really worried that it is not going to come out alive. Hey, this oh. breath. Okay, we've got a heartbeat. Oh. Oh, oh my god. She's really cuddly, she's quite gentle, and she'll play with the others, but then she knows when it's time she wants to withdraw and she'll just go quietly and sleep on her own, and she's affectionate and she's just lovely. Here, stick this stuff in your mouth, not my toe. Alice's brothers and sisters will be heading to their new homes over the next few weeks. I'm going to be sad. It's going to be so quiet in here. I've got Alice to raise, but yeah, it's going to be really quiet. But they all need homes. That's every dog needs a home that's going to look after them. They can't all stay here forever. And it's great to see them being so strong and healthy. And um, we got there. Nobody keeled over and died from getting cold or not having a feed or getting some strange disease that we didn't know what it was. 
So yeah, we made it. On the Isle of Wight, Scott's next job is on some Australian animals he's very familiar with. When I was invited to the Isle of Wight to help with tiger surgery, I never expected to see some wallabies. Who would have thought it? But now these expats apparently need my help, so I'm very much looking forward to meeting them. Scott's at Tapnell Farm, where he's met up with animal handler Kimmy. It's quite the impressive enclosure for, for the convicts then. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> keeping them safely in when they should yeah. be. Yeah, so they're quite good escapologists, are they? They're very good. They've worked it all out now. Well, they're Aussie. They're very intelligent. Here we are. <laughs> there we go, safely in. These are all Bennett's wallabies, and Scott's been asked to come and worm them. So this is Katie, our keeper. Hi, Hi Scott. Katie. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Good to see you. Wallabies. Like, wow. Like to introduce you to the marvellous mob that we have here. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Or should I say, g'day, mate. G'day, mate. <laughs> yeah, they better. won't be saying it hey? back, I think. Really? Hey? All right. Well, I suppose then we should probably start with the biggest one whilst we're yeah, full of so energy. Yeah, this is Juice. This is Juice, our big boy here. Our late champ. Remember, we're on the same team here. Yeah? He's puffing his chest up for you. He is, isn't he? He's a... You what, mate? <laughs> he's, he's, he's sizing me up. Yeah. Oh. oh. Wow. OK. He doesn't like you already. I've got some other recruits that we need to help us today. So I've got Mike and Lucy. OK, nice um, one. And Great. a couple of keepers here Excellent. at Tatmall that are going to come give us a hand today. Good. There could be kicks coming at all angles, so just be very, very careful. I'm feeling a little bit more relaxed knowing that I have helpers ready to tackle these wallabies because although they look really cute and really cuddly, they've got really sharp, quite dangerous claws and they can kick pretty hard. Mmm, right. yummy, hey? Yeah, you won't like that, mate. Nibble straight Ooh. in there. <laughs> Nibbles. nibbles is wormed already. Yeah, okay. I can tell you that. She's wormed so herself. Know. Straight in there. There you go. Only if they're yeah. all like nibbles. <laughs> Only if they're all like nibbles. Yeah, I, I feel this is the, the easy one before yeah. the difficult one. Right, so just grab the base of the tail <laughs> and try not to get kicked, I suppose. Yeah, that's basically it. Okay, I'm going in. All right. Okay, I'm going in. Be good, mate. Don't make me look like a fool. At Tapnell Farm on the Isle of Wight, Scott is about to worm a mob of wallabies. There's one important golden rule when you're about to wrangle a wallaby. That's don't get on the receiving end of their really powerful hind limbs and those sharp claws. Go from the back end and grab the tail. Oh, I don't want to get it. There we go. Nice. Good boy. Here's the juice for juice. Juice for juice. Hello, mate. Wow. Right. Do you want me to take the blanket off? Yes, yeah. please. Hello, beautiful boy. Sorry about that, mate. Let me just have a quick look at you whilst you're there. Hey. It's amazing teeth. Hey. A little bit of tar to build up there, haven't you, mate? Hey. Squeeze this in. I've worked out where there's a gap between his molars. So. All right. Here we go, mate. Good boy. It's a messy bit. OK. <laughs> I know. No one likes taking their medicine, mate. One, don't let go of the tail. Two, put it. Three, go. And off he goes. He'll be in a bit of a grump now. So that's the mob leader done, so the rest should be quite plain sailing. But it's always a worry when you're trying to flip a wallaby, even a small one, because they can deliver quite a hefty kick. And their specifically designed, very sharp claws can open up their predator's abdomens. So you need to watch out. And how often generally do you have to worm the uh, So wallabies? we worm them uh, every three months. Wow, so every three months you have to tackle them. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, so should we let them up? Three, two, one, go. Good boys. Right, who's next? Did you want to do an albino? Yeah, Mix absolutely. it up? Yeah. Jacob is one of our handmaids as well. Okay, he's a very gentle boy, isn't he? No surprise that they're very rare in Australia because they just would get so burnt to a crisp. Yeah, it's better that you're in the UK, mate, isn't it? Eh? Here you go. Nibbles. My nibbles <laughs> come for some more. 
but just such an incredible animal. Wow. Hey. Not you, <laughs> him. <laughs> okay, so count to three, we'll let him up. Yeah. Three, two, one, go. Here we go. So this is Cinnamon here. She's got a little bit of a chubby face, and that's how we can tell she's Cinnamon. Yes, but something else she's got a little bit yeah, chubby, doesn't she? Yeah, she's actually got a droopy pouch at the moment, which means we might have a baby. So a little wow. Joey in her pouch, I know. Got one in there, haven't you, Mrs? Wow, that's incredible, eh? Good girls. You like sweet potato, don't you? There you oh, go. Good girl. I know, I know, I know. Okay, okay, all right. So, hmm, there definitely feels like there is a little body in there. Does it? Yeah. Oh, excitement. There we are, look. Guys, can you yes. see? Look. Little baby. Look, look at that little arm moving. Wow. It's extraordinary. The juice is the daddy. He's done a very, very good job this year. All five of our ladies fell pregnant, so he's done wow. a really good job. Yeah. Quite prolific. Man, is, that a, yeah. is, that a, is that a nice summer? Yeah, tell me about it. He's enjoyed himself. What a special thing to be able to do, to it feel looks... a little joey. We're going to leave your baby alone. You're doing a very good job. All right, so last little bit of worming for you, and this will help your baby as well. There we go. Well done. And good luck growing that baby of yours, hey? Look forward to meeting a joey very soon. All right, should we let her up? Three, two, one, and release. There we go. There you go. Wow, they're all just so beautiful. Yeah. Oh, she's oh, she's forgiven us already. I've absolutely loved my experience here at Tattnall Farm Park. It feels like I've gone from a little island to an experience of a very big island quite far away. Being around these little Aussie creatures has just really reminded me just how incredibly special Australian wildlife really is. And it's just so wonderful that they're just on my doorstep and I get to give them a little cuddle. Later that day, Scott's back at the Isle of Wight Zoo to meet up with Charlotte and check up on the two coatis. So here they are, our surgical patients. Yeah, you wouldn't know that they'd had quite major surgery a few days ago, would you? No, not at all. Well, I'm just going to check out my own handiwork. <laughs> it looks very neat. It doesn't even look sore. And he's forgiven you. What you more could like you ask for? Me, hey? How are you, Sattler? You OK, sweetheart? How'd that spay go? <laughs> Good girl. Hey, you're looking really great, aren't you? Yeah, it's fantastic. I'm so happy with that suture line. It must be. Good it's job really done. really good. Yeah. And now you can live a lovely existence here at the zoo with no concern of brother and sister babies. <laughs> oh, you guys are good. Naughty you? little animals. Right. And now to see our girl. I hope uh, the her poor patient. mouth isn't too sore. Yes. She seemed really good this morning. So, yeah. Yeah, again, just as if nothing had happened, really. It's so tough, so aren't they? So tough. Make us feel like complete wimps. Yeah. Before he heads back to London, Scott has one last patient to see. Hello. Hello, baby. How are you doing? Good morning. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> How are you? Oh, baby oh. girl. How are you? So a bit of leftover blood. Yeah, but the breath smells so much better yeah. already. Hey, how was that? Was that horrible dentist mean to you, was he? No worse wear this morning, is she? No. Hey? She's, but she's really hungry because she's been starved down over a few days. So I think we'd probably better give her Feed something. Her, put her out of her misery. Do you want to have some food, sweetheart? You earned it, haven't you? What's mummy got for you? Hey? See you first bit. There you go. Oh. I'm really happy with the way that Aisha's surgery went. It was really challenging, but we got to remove all the teeth that we needed to at the same time as ironing out some of her old lady issues. I'm gonna say goodbye to me. Bye bye, Good gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. No. Yes, I love That's you. That's a too. nice goodbye, Aisha. Yes. We'll put her on some anti inflammatories to help to manage her arthritis, but apart from that, her bloods have come back really good, so Charlotte can rest easy knowing that she's got a very healthy old girl. Charlotte, it's been such an incredible opportunity. Thank you so much. For oh, thanks me for being a part of it. Be involved, and what an incredible <laughs> team we assembled, and uh, we got a great outcome. A happy girl who's uh, got a healthy mouth again, and hopefully we'll live here for a lot longer with you. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Paws crossed. Bye, baby. Love you. As always, I've absolutely loved my time here at the Isle of Wight, and to be able to work with these majestic creatures and the fantastic Charlotte is always a complete privilege. So I do hope it's not too long before I'll be back visiting again. Mm -hmm.
At the end of a busy week, Scott's back in Richmond, in time for an important checkup on a very special pup. Oh my god! Who's that? <laughs> hello! Say hello! <laughs> this is Elvis. Clinic regulars Karina and Gaz have just adopted a new puppy, nine week old miniature dachshund Elvis. I can't believe this. He is gorgeous. <laughs> And he's quickly winning over Maz and Kirsty. When I first saw Elvis, I cried the first time I held him. It just felt so nice to, to have that love. So yeah, it was yeah. perfect. It was lovely. Elvis. Elvis. Elvis I'm Hello lovely. there. <laughs> Here are all the commotions. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that? Hello. Look. <laughs> Look how tiny he looks. <laughs> Oh, my Elvis, goodness. Who's that? Elvis. Yes. <laughs> of course. He's nothing but a hound dog. Is he crying, <laughs> Is he crying all the time? All the time. Is he? Yeah. Should we go in the concert room? Check you over. Come on. Come on. With, come on. Let's bring your proud parents. Come on. That's it. It's so great to see you guys again and absolutely gorgeous to see this little fella. But Elvis, you've got some big shoes to fill. Yeah, yeah definitely, yeah. Absolutely. Come on. Karina and Gaz's first puppy was French bulldog Vince, Come on. who passed away with a rare muscular disorder. Oh, good boy. Vince was, was a heartbreaking case uh, to be diagnosed with muscular dystrophy, a wasting disease. Unfortunately, it is going to be weeks, I think. OK. <laughs> it's such a heartbreaking thing to go through. And I must say, I absolutely love oh. the present. It's the my pride of place possession. Oh, nice. Look, for Elvis, look. Look, this is your big brother's footprint. Is that... So he just <laughs> touched with his beautiful soul. Oh, yeah, no. see? But we yeah, wouldn't definitely. have been able to do it without you guys. Well, exactly, yeah. At all. I think the relationship's oh, Honestly, like yeah. We... Well, it's not very often that, you know, through such severe adversity, like we've all become friends. Yeah, it's just so amazing. It's yeah. so lovely. lovely. That's why we were so excited yeah. to, to yeah. bring this one in to show you all. <laughs> it's like showing off to remember the family. I think my family <laughs> was like, right, we're coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, got a new little addition, putting smiles back on our faces again, which is nice. OK, well, should we have a little look at you and make sure that you are perfectly formed in all ways, eh? Not just super handsome. But this is far more than a social visit. After the heartache they went through with Vince, Karina and Gaz are anxious to make sure that little Elvis is healthy. His teeth are lovely. Who's that? It's great. <laughs> Everything sounds perfect. Great. Yeah. Oh, yay! Nothing. Well done, Elvis. Oh, that's brilliant. Got some growing to do, though, mate. <laughs> yeah. They're not replacing Vince. They're just moving on and giving another dog a loving home. Elvis is a very, very lucky boy. Oh, you're Bye. wonderful. Take care. Thank you so Bye. much. God bless. All Thank you. Take Thank care. You very Enjoy. Much. Bye, Bye, guys. Bye, mate. See ya. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.